Hi everyone, I'm the Plant Propagator and welcome to my channel. Today it's a beautiful late January day here in Southwest Florida. Just a great day, a little cloudy today, a little high humidity, which means my guys, my orchids really like uh, what's happening today. So um, what I wanna do is show you a couple of different things. I'm going to show you uh, my my um, my award winner, yay! Um, right here, I took this um, I took this plant to just the local affiliated orchid society uh, chapter this past week, and for the first time ever, I actually got a uh, the the blue ribbon here is an indicator. Of, this is just popular vote, so uh, we have a couple of different things. These orchids are voted. By the membership, we had a little over 100 people at our meeting this past week, and so um, I got I got a, a ribbon for popular vote. This is in the large Cattleya category, and then I got a uh, this other is individual judging for for flower quality. Um, these aren't AOS American Orchid Society awards; these are just the local uh, awards. But it's still kind of nice to bring this bring the plants in and have them judged by your peers and by uh, somebody else who knows a little bit more about orchids. So I was really pleased uh, to have this. Um, if you can't tell, I'm sitting, sitting on the ground because this is a huge pot and this orchid with a pot and which has lava stone and leca in it, this thing probably goes between 80 and 100 pounds. So it's a little heavy. So I'm on the ground uh, with the orchid. It's actually sitting, up. it's not quite on the ground. The orchid, I am, this isn't. Um, it's sitting up on, on blocks and they got some piping underneath it so it sits above the ground a little bit. It's not good to put the orchids on the, on, on the, in their pots on the ground. So it's actually above the ground. Uh, but anyway, I was just real happy. This is a uh, machine of victory, and I've shared this with you in the past. It's just a wonderful, um, large, um, great smelling orchid. You walk by this plant, um, and you can you can smell it uh, depending on the time of the day. But it's a really a really great plant. Um, I wanted to share this with you because I'm excited about this, but I also wanted to uh, share with you a cross that I'm planning on uh, doing today. And for that, I'll move to another, uh, another location. So I want to share with you some information on how I think about uh, the crosses that I'm going to make, what type of characteristics and colors uh, I'm going for. I'll show you the uh, the actual cross itself, and I'll show you. I'll also explain to you what's expected, what I'm expecting from the cross. Um, you know, just as far as what happens to the flower, and how long it's going to take for the seed capsule to uh, to, ri to ripen and, and mature, so that I can do flasking of the contents of that seed capsule. Okay, so what I'm going to do is is move to another location where I'm actually sitting down rather on on a on a chair rather than on the ground and uh, I want to show you my oh and I should mention that the orchid that I'm crossing onto is a first bloom for me it's a plant that I've had for about three years but I, I was pretty excited because I've seen the bloom coming and it was a uh, it was a first bloom so I've got a first bloom to share with you and I also want to show you how I cross onto the flower that is from that first bloom. Okay, so let's move to another location and we'll follow up with a crossing of my first bloom on another one of my cat layers. And we're back. Uh, this is my first bloom on, this is Orglades Classic Robert. And I've had this plant for three years. Um, has it done, has it done great? Um, but this is my first bloom one. It's not a real vigorous grower, so um, I'm not sure if I'm going to hold on to it or exactly what I'm going to do to it. But uh, And it's a white flower, which is also not my favorite. You may not even be able to see it that well uh, with, the, with the background of the wall here. Um, but the fragrance, this, this is a Walkeriana hybrid, and the fragrance on it is just unbelievable. As I'm sitting here close to this flower, uh, it's just it it's heavenly it really really is nice um, the the fragrance on it's a little bit of spicy not as much floral 
So it, it's just a really nice um, fragrance. And this is the reason <laughs> that I want to use it for crosses. The flower itself um, is, it's, it's actually um, pretty nice. It's symmetrical. It's got some good, um, good thickness to it. It lies pretty flat. So overall, it's a pretty nice uh, flower. It, these, both of these flowers, it's interesting, have um, bruises on the petals. And it's because I took this to a, a garden club meeting this past week. I, I do give local talks and I talk either about plant propagation or orchids. So at the beginning of the meeting, I asked, I said, what do you want to hear about? Plant prop classical plant propagation or orchids? And everyone yells out, orchids. So, so we talked about orchids. It was a really energetic group. I ended up talking for, for I don't know, I think it was an hour, 10 minutes, hour, 15 minutes. Um, and and I, I brought some of my orchids in and I shared those uh, with, with the group anyway transport of this orchid uh, to that meeting in the, the back of my truck. There, the back of the flowers rubbed on uh, some of the leaves, so there was a little bruising. It's interesting. It's on the left petal here and the right petal here, but in both cases, uh, just because the flower was uh, getting jostled around in the, in the back of my truck, th there was a little bit of a abrasion or bruising of the, uh, of the petals. Um, still nice. It's still fragrant. Uh, there's there's no really other issues uh, with that. And what I want to do today is show you a cross that I'm going to make uh, using this as the seed parent. So I, I, I want to also share with you um, my approach for doing this and what I looked at. So what I have on my, on my phone is I keep a list of all of my orchids with, with pictures. So I have pictures and then the date of bloom. And if they bloom year after year, I write when the subsequent blooms were. So I can go through and I have nice pictures of my orchids, but I also can see when they bloom, if they bloom once a year, twice a year. If they And, and many of my orchids, um, they're, they're um, day length sensitive, uh, photo, period, photo period sensitive. And, and so they bloom the same time every year. They can determine the, the day length and that dictates when they're, when they're gonna bloom. Uh, others of them just bloom whenever they, you know, right after they put out a new new pseudobulb. Uh, and that's, some of them are continuous. They just bloom in all the time. Anyway, back to this story. So this is my first bloom um, on this plant. Uh, and I'm, I'm pretty excited about it because of the color. But I also have the list of uh, and images of all the other orchids uh, that I have on my phone. So what I do is I kind of scroll through all of those images and I hold the images up to this flower and I try to imagine what, uh, um, you know, what the cross is going to look like. So I go through one image and then the next and then the next. Um, I also take into consideration, you know, flower size, what type of improvement uh, I'm getting. And I also take into consideration if I can remember if something had a nice smell associated with it. So I went through um, all my images and I, and I came up, and maybe it's too much work, I don't know, I came up with a short list of three different, three, uh, three different orchids that I wanted, that I was considering crossing onto this. So this is, again, this is Orgade, Orglade Classic Robert, and I'll put this on the top left of the screen. Uh, the other ones that I was, was considering was uh, green veil dressy as a male parent. I was considering, I considered also uh, Ports of Paradise and Rhode Isle. Both of these really nice flowers, very vigorous bloomers and fragrant. And then I also uh, am considering Clear Stars, which is a, a relatively new addition to my collection. And so they should all be on your screen. So when you take, and I'll take them off. So when you take a look at these things, they all have something to offer. Most of them are light colored flower, light blooms. And what I don't want to do is mix another color with this and kind of wash out the color with because of the white here. I wanted to kind of contribute to some shape and some offering at that level. And what I ended up picking for this to, to, to cross with this is clear stars because it has a really nice um, it, it, the, the flower is big, you can't tell from that, um, um, from, from the image that I showed previously. The, the flower is, is big, it is a Nidosa cross, 
um, so it has really thin petals and I think it'll complement the really uh, frilly thick petals on, on this. Uh, the thing that I like about it is that it has a really nice uh, deep red to purple throat and I think that'll, that'll cross nicely into this and so what I'm hoping to see is a flower that a large flower fragrant that has uh, thickened uh, petals and then a contrasting uh, dark colored throat uh, um, lip maybe with a, a yellow throat to it and so I but I, I don't know uh, what it's going to get. Clear Stars is a very vigorous plant. I looked online today it has not been used there's no one that has a registered cross using Clear Stars which is going to change because um, as I said, Clear Stars was a gift, and the person who gifted it to me, um, he's trying to, he's in my orchid breeding club, and he's trying to make some crosses uh, as well. Uh, the other reason that I'm pretty sure it will, that Clear Star will have some registered progeny is because this is Clear Stars, and you can kind of get an indication of how vigorous uh, this plant was. I've had it for less than a year. It's already bloomed twice for me, so it's... Um, Vigorous plant, nice bloomer. Um, lo looking down here, um, I can see some, some new, uh, new growth, some new pseudobulbs growing out. But the thing that I want to show you is if you can see right here, um, let me see if I can put it in the middle of the screen. If you can see right here, uh, this is a, uh, a nice capsule uh, that formed from the last bloom that came out on, on Clear Stars. And this is a huge capsule so I think this will do I think this will do really well so I'm, I'm getting progeny from this um, and then I think it's fine to use it the last time that that clear stars bloomed for me so it's not blooming now but the thing is I harvested the polynia which I'll show you how to do with this in a second I harvested the polynia put it in a, a tube a small tube and you can put it in uh, paper or envelopes and then I store them in the fridge in my in my with my my um, scoring system and I can always go back now back to it and recover it so the plant that I'm using to to cross onto this certainly isn't blooming now but I go I can go through my whole collection and look at the plants that I that are in my collection and most of which I have polynia from so it doesn't matter that the plants not blooming now I can make crosses anytime I want the polynia I, I think it's safe to keep it for a year I've kept some for uh, some of the polynia from the flowers in the fridge in these tubes for for a couple of years and they stay good and so you can use these for for crosses and it's really it's a really convenient way to do things so I'm gonna cross Clear stars onto Orglade, uh, Orglade's classic shown right here. And I, I always hope for great stuff, uh, but <laughs> who knows? A lot of times when you make these crosses, you, you don't get anything out of it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the polynia. I'm going to harvest the plenty off of this, put it in another, put it in this tube. Uh, clear star is, polynia is already in another tube here. And I pulled it out of the fridge and refrigerator just a few minutes ago. I don't like, it's not a good idea to, to pull it out, put it back in too many times, let it warm up. Um, it, fridge temperature, it stays for a long time, it stays for good. And this is out, normally I pull it, pull it out, make the cross, put it right back. But because I'm, I'm sharing this with you, um, I'm, not, I'm not doing that. So it has to stay out a little longer, but it, it, should, be, it should be fine. Okay, so uh, oh, the other thing is that I should tell you, when you remove the polynia, sometimes when you remove the polynia from the flower, um, sometimes that you'll get a uh, decline in the in the health of the flower. You know, the the you'll get some um, wilting of the you'll get faster senescence or wilting of the flower. When you make a successful cross, you definitely get incredibly fast wilting a lot of times the flower that looks as beautiful as this does right now in two or three days it will completely collapse after a successful pollination which is too bad the, the wonderful fragrance will go away um, but I'm looking at it as you know next generation of orchids could come from this guy so we'll, we'll see how this goes um, okay so I have to put put my reading glasses on 
so that I can see what I'm doing. And then what I do, and if you're interested in seeing this, I've had, I posted some videos previously on how to, uh, clo showing close-ups of how to, um, how to get the pollinia out and how it's stored. So I'm not going to do any close-ups today. But here is, I just took off the anther cap, and these are, these are really nice, fat, juicy, oh my God. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see this. Okay, so the anther cap, the anther cap with the plenty removed is right here. I'll just put it in the pot. Um, and I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but here is the, the polinia is on the end of the forceps um, and it's there it's large there here let me show it to you here be able to see it a little bit better okay so it's the yellow on the end of the forceps what people like to do um, as far as polinia harvest is they like to use um, toothpicks which is a good idea i really like to use i have I have these really nice forceps and I really like to use uh, these forceps. They work really well for me. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do, see, and normally what I do is I just keep these tubes in a, in a box like this, a grid box in my fridge, but I'm also gonna write C, I'm sorry, <laughs> this isn't clear stars. I'm gonna write um, or, or O C for or, or glades, classic and I'm also going to write that on the side of the tube and I do this just it's it's kind of a double check because this is normally just a grid system so I go to um, I'll go to um, something that will be in position F4 and I just it's good to have a double check to make sure that the polynia that you're expecting to be in F4 is in F4 all right so Oh, I still need these. All right, so what I'm going to do now, so, oh, and I should say the polynia is, is are removed from these, and it prevents the possibility of self-pollination. The stigmatic surface, which is where the polynia go on, is located right um, behind the anther cap. So if this is the, um, if this is the, the, the uh, flower right here, and the um, anther cap was right here on the end of it, and it's pulled off, the pollinia go up right behind it, right, uh, right up underneath there for a successful cross. All right, so what I'm going to do now is take the old pollinia from clear stars. And let me just show you. So this is, an old, this is an old tube that I collected a while ago, and you may be able to see the yellow pollinia that are in the bottom of this tube. And now what I do and this is here's something that, that I do. You can use a new toothpick. But I actually, it's just orchid stuff. So I actually just kind of lick it off and make sure there's no residual pollinia or, or pollen grains on here. Pollinia is a, is a sack of pollen that orchids and a few other plants make. And I just got to make sure that the old pollinia, that there aren't any old pollinia that are on my uh, forceps here. Okay, so then I will grab, if I can... I'm trying to grab there. I was able to get it. There's still, there's some polynia left in this tube. So here's the polynia that I got. And what I do is I reach up underneath here. And it just sticks. The, um, the, <laughs> I'm just, anytime I move, anytime I move the flower, I just get this really nice fragrance, and that's what I'm smiling about. So that is just awesome. Um, uh, and any, I guess it's just it's great. Okay, so the last thing that I do after I make this cross is I have a tag, and I write on the tag in pencil. So this is this is Orglade Orglade's classic times clear stars and then on the back I will put today's date 
and then I wrap this around the base of this flower, essentially loop it through and, and it'll grab on to it nicely. Okay. The other thing that I do, because I am a, I'm a note taker, is that I record it. I have, I have all of the pollinations that I make. Uh, so I'll record all of this information on my phone. So I, ha I have my orchid flower database here. I have my Polinia database here. It's all in the cloud. It's all good. Uh, also, it, it cloud shares it with my laptop. And then uh, the oh, and then the final thing is I have my crosses here, and I have a list of my crosses, and I, I record successful and unsuccessful crosses. Sometimes the whole flower, everything just falls off and that's a non-successful and I'd like to have a record of that. So I'll record this uh, because what it does is it allows me to go back if I've got, you know, it allows me to go back and see which pollinations I made that were successful that may be ready to be harvest for, uh, for, for flasking of those. So the last thing I'll do is I'll put the pollination, um, you know, the, the female, again, the female, the seed parent is first on this tag and in my, in my database, times and then the, the pollinium, pollinia donor, the male parent. And then I also put in when the pollinia was collected because it's in my database and then today's date, which is the date of the cross. Okay, so that's, I mean, it's a little, it seems a little complicated, but it, it's, there's, there's really not much to it. And once you get into the groove of doing this, everything is good. Now, not everyone does it at this level. It's a lot of people that just make a lot of crosses and they go through their collections and, and see when the capsules are ready and they, they pull them out. And, and, and capsules are going to mature at different times depending on what the plant is. And there's a number of different things involved. But I like keeping track, I don't, I don't have that many plants and I like keeping track of all the crosses that I make. And, uh, and everything that I start with and how everything is going. Phew, okay, so that's, that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed um, the sharing of this first bloom on this plant and the cross that I made. Also, I should say, some people don't like using first blooms in a cross because, because when you have capsule formation, it really does take the energy out of the plant. When it's, when these, it's nurturing, you know, a hundred thousand to a million babies in there, you're not going to get, you know, you're not going to get a whole lot of growth. Some, some people don't like doing this. I, yeah, it's fine. I'll, I'll, I, I do this and I do this a lot. And for me, it's, it's fine. But you hear these stories about how once you make, once you make a cross and you get a capsule, it won't bloom again for, you know, three years, four years, whatever. And, and I haven't, I haven't seen that. Um, vigorous growing plants will do, I think, just fine. All right. So with that, <laughs> that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked what you saw today and you want to keep on seeing my videos, it would help me out if you could click on like, share, and subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. Okay, that's all I have for today. Again, I hope you enjoyed watching and happy propagating.